Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. So um, I'm just going to have a look at the role that the BRICS countries play in utilizing um, trade remedies and safeguard mechanism, as well as how these measures are implemented on the BRICS countries. Now, the data that we used to establish the patterns were mostly the WTO databases. However, the WTO database do not have a lot of information on Russia. Um, so wherever the um, data is aggregated in terms of BRICS, except in the case of where we look at what's the implication or how anti-dumping duties affect BRICS country exports, um, Russia is not included in all the other aggregations. We did get some data for Russia's implementation of anti-dumping duties as well as safeguards in terms of the global trade alert, um, which is incorporated in specific places. So what does the data show? The data show firstly that China is the country which is mostly affected by anti-dumping measures. It also shows India is the currently mostly implementing anti-dumping measures as well as safeguards. And out of all the countervailing measures implemented by all WTO member countries, almost 50% of these countervailing measures were implemented on exports from BRICS countries. So if we look at the specific measures, firstly anti-dumping measures. Now mostly, most of the anti-dumping measures implemented on the exports of BRICS countries was implemented by non-BRICS countries. Only about 26% of anti-dumping measures implemented on BRICS exports were actually implemented by other BRICS countries. And these were mo mostly India and Brazil, which targeted exports from China through anti-dumping measures. Throughout the whole time period from 1995 until 2012, um, BRICS implemented 34% of all the anti-dumping measures implemented by all WTO member countries and was affected by 36% of all measures. Now as a regional grouping, these are the countries mostly affected and almost mostly implementing anti-dumping duties compared to all other developing country um, states. If we look at the individual BRICS countries, then like I said earlier, India is the country which mostly implemented anti-dumping measures and then that is followed by China and Brazil. Now, India is not just the BRICS country which implemented the most of anti-dumping measure. It's also the WTO country which, which implemented the most anti-dumping measures out of all other WTO member countries. Now, although there has been a significant decrease in the amount of duties implemented by India from approximately 2002, if we look at the complete time period from 1995 until 2012, India is still the top contender and the most prolific user of anti-dumping measures. If we look at how these measures, anti-dumping measures, affect the exports of um, the BRICS countries, then the country mostly affected is China. As you can see from the graph, since about 1995 until approximately 2010, there has been a steady incline increase in the amount of anti-dumping duties actually utilized against China, China's exports. And the rest of the graphs showed that there's actually been a slow and steady decrease in the amount of anti-dumping measures implemented against the exports of all the other um, countries. Now most of the measures implemented against China's exports was actually implemented by other developing countries. It was approximately 67% of all measures implemented against China was actually implemented by other developing countries. And these measures were quite, quite concentrated in specifically two product sectors, namely base metals and chemical products. If we look at countervailing measures, now the BRICS countries are not great users of countervailing measures. As you can see from the graph, they were more more affected by countervailing measures than the amount that they actually implemented between 1995 and 2012. Most of the countervailing measures that was implemented against BRICS countries were on the exports of China and India. So like I said earlier, 
the BRICS countries are not great users of the countervailing measures. Most of the measures were implemented by Brazil, followed by South Africa and then China. Out of the seven measures Brazil implemented, five of them was in 1995. So after that time period, there was actually not a great number of use of these measures. Countervailing measures are normally still being used by the developed countries. In terms of countervailing measures affecting BRICS country exports, once again, China was the country mostly affected by countervailing measures. Out of all the country um, countervailing measures implemented, 22% of those were implemented on the exports of China. Most of these measures were implemented by developed countries, the US, Canada, and Australia, and it was also very highly concentrated in three product sectors namely base metals, machinery, and clothing and textiles. In terms of safeguards, all BRICS countries except India and possibly Russia are not great users of safeguard mechanisms. Between 1996 and 2012, most of the safeguard mechanisms, safeguards were implemented by other developing countries, mostly Indonesia and Turkey. Then, that was followed by safeguards utilized by developed countries, mostly the US, and then we have the BRICS countries. So they're not great users, except for India. Out of the 18 measures that was implemented by all BRICS countries between 1996 and 2012, India implemented 14 of those, which made them the BRICS country implementing the most safeguards but also the WTO member country implementing the, the most amount of total safeguard mechanisms. Something else interesting, like I said, Russia is not included in the WTO database, especially, um, especially on, safe, on safeguards. So if we look at the data and the global trade alert, what you will find is between 2009 and 2011, Russia implemented six safeguard mechanisms. Now that doesn't sound a lot. But if we compare that to the information available on safeguards in the WTO database, what you will see is there was only one country which implemented more safeguards over that three-year period than Russia, and that was Indonesia, implementing nine measures. So now that I've given you all that data, what does it actually mean? Well, this gives an implication of what the trade opportunities are for BRICS exports, to other countries as well as what's the trade opportunities and the implica implications for countries wanting to gain access to the BRICS market. Seeing that the BRICS countries are some of the most prolific users of most of these trade remedy and safeguard instruments, that can have a significant impact for other countries that wish to obtain access to the markets of these emerging economies. From the other side of the coin, Seeing that most of these measures are targeted at exports of BRICS countries, mostly China and India, that also has an implication for the trade opportunities for the BRICS member states to actually try and increase the exports and increase the export shares that they have in other developing, especially developing, and then also developed country markets. Thank you.